Hello, today let's solve this integral by another method. This problem was originally posted in a video by Michael Penn, and I put a link under this video so you can see it. This integral is tough if we try to solve it in a real domain, but if we solve it in a complex domain, it will be a shortcut. In this video, I will use a contour integral to solve it. So let's get started. So here, instead of solving it in a real domain, we consider this integral in a complex domain. So first, let's find the zeros for the denominator, and this will be the pose for this integrand function. So first, we let the denominator equals to zero, and then this z squared term can be split into two terms. And next, we complete the square, and then we do the factorization. So we got two equations. From the top equation, we can got two complex roots for z. And from the bottom equation, we can got another two complex roots. And next, we mark these four roots on the complex plane. So for the denominator, we can factorize it into this form. And then we construct a new integral. And note here, the function f is defined into this way. In the numerator, it's log z squared. Maybe you want to ask why we define the function f into this way, and you will see the answer later. I copy them here. So first, let's draw the contour here. And this contour includes four parts, c1, c2, c3, and c4. From Cauchy residue theorem, we know the integral on the entire contour equals to 2 pi i times the sum of the residues. And next, we will calculate the integral on the four parts of this contour. For the integral on c1, we write it here. For the integral on c2 and c4, we will talk about them later. Now let's look at the integral on c3. If we set the point on c1, which is on this red line, is z, then for the point on c3, it will be z times e to the 2 pi i because its argument angle revolves an extra 2 pi radians. So for this integral on c3, we will replace z by z times e to the 2 pi i. And note for the lower and upper limit here. If you look at the arrow direction on this blue line, which is the c3, it's from the infinity to the original point. So the integral is from infinity to zero. And then we simplify the numerator first. So we write the product into the sum, and then the second term equals to 2 pi i. And next, for the denominator, after we take the power we got here, e to the power 4 pi i equals to 1, and e to the power 8 pi i is also equal to 1. So we got here. And next, for the differential term we got here, e to the power 2 pi i equals to 1. So it equals to dz. After plugging the simplified results we got here. And note for the lower and upper limit here. We put a negative sign in front, so we flip the lower and upper limit from 0 to infinity. I copy them here. For the integral on c2 and c4, by doing some analysis, we can show both of them vanish. But to make this video compact, I will not go through this part and I put this part in another video. You can click here to see the details for the proof. After plugging the results for these four parts we got here, and then we group them into a single integral, and then we expand and simplify the numerator, the log z squared term cancel out, so we got here. And then we split it into the real part and the imaginary part. If you still remember, just now, we define the function f as the log z square in the numerator, and here is the reason. If you look at this purple box, let me subtract these two terms, the log z square cancel out. So finally, we left with the log z term in the numerator, and this term is what we want. But if we define the function f as the log z in the numerator, then after this subtraction step, which is highlighted in the purple box, then this log z term will cancel out. In that case, we cannot proceed anymore. That's why in the very beginning, we define the function f as the log z square in the numerator. And then we put the right hand side here. And next, we will calculate the residues. 
I copy the function here, and note for the denominator, it can be factorized into this form. After plug-in, we write this function into this form. And here, I only demonstrate the calculation for the residue Z1. For other three residues, it can be calculated similarly. So for the residue on Z1, because Z1 is the simple pole of this function, so we just calculate the limit here. After plugging the function f, we got here. And then these two terms cancel out. And next, we just replace z by z1 here. And record the coordinate for these four roots. So we just plug in and do some algebra to simplify it. Then we got the residue on z1, which is here. And here, I list the results for the four residues. And next, we just take the sum for these four residues. After simplify it, we got here. I copy them here. So after plugging the result for the sum of residues, we got here. For the right-hand side, we simplify it, and then we write it into the real part and the imaginary part. And next, we just let the real part equals to the real part, which is colored in blue. And we let the imaginary part equals to the imaginary part, which is in red. So from this blue equation, after simplified, we got here. And similarly, after simplifying this red equation, we got here. And finally, we replace z by x to go back to the real domain, so we got this answer. And additionally, we got a byproduct for this integral, which is colored in blue. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and give a like. That's all for today, and thank you for watching.